lot of cameras. Welcome. And which, where am I looking? The London International Hall Show is a real celebration in Britain of equestrian sport with three World Cup qualifiers, but the undoubted pinnacle is the Longines FEI World Cup jumping qualifier with a world-class field assembling in this part of London. It drives huge crowds over the four or five days of the event, not just to see the show jumping, but all the other things that make up this unique equestrian uh, occasion. But for me, there's no doubt about the highlight. It is the FEI World Cup jumping qualifier. The World Cup qualifications are very important for us riders. If you want to win a World Cup qualifier, you need to have a very fast horse and you need to go for it. Uh, I was coming to London to catch up some more World Cup points and to finalize my qualification for the World Cup final. In the big class yesterday, the um, Longines Masters, I decided to start EIC Coolie Jump the Queue. It was a 155 class with, uh, with a jump off. There were quite a few clear rounds so, uh, and, and very fast colleagues. So we knew that it will be very fast. I know my horse is very fast, so I was last to go. Luckily we could make it and win the class. If we feel that we have a good flow, that gives us confidence also for the next classes. There's no two ways about it. The field assembled for this year's launching FEI World Cup qualifier was as good as we perhaps have seen. Obviously, from a British perspective, any time you've got Ben Mayer and Scott Brash, you know the quality is there. So in terms of what we were ex going to expect in this year's event, everyone, I'm sure, was really looking forward to a, a, a competition that would provide thrilling entertainment for a sellout crowd. Welcome to the Longin FEI Jumping World Cup, the eighth of the 14 legs of the Western European League. We have circumnavigated Europe. We're now in London. This man is indeed the 18th of the 36th in this class, and he is in unbelievable form. He's currently the leading rider at the London International Horse Show. It's Max Kuna, the world number nine, with EIC up to Jacko Blue. Technically, it was not the easiest course for my horse when I walked it, but uh, I know he could do it. I had in between a little bit of hard ride and I had to push quite a lot, which I usually don't like so much. I like it more smooth and more soft, but okay, that's how it was and it turned out well. He was fighting with me, EAC, up to Chaco, and we got a clear round. It's the leading rider at the moment, and this is going to keep him right up there. It's Max Kuna for Austria, makes it clear number five with EIC up to Jacko Blue. For Max Kuna, the week has really been going extremely well. So inevitably, when he made it through to the jump off, people were thinking, right, this could be Max Kuna's turn. And now to Austria. At the moment, the leading rider at the show this week, already with a win and a second, Max Kuna with EIC up to Jacko Blue. For me, okay, the, the most important thing was to catch up some more points to be uh, safe for the final. Usually EIC up to Jacko is a very fast horse also, so I, I went for it. Seventh in the Western European League on 35 points. He's gonna pick up some valuable points, almost enough probably to get him to his fifth World Cup final. He looks set up for a quick round. Ooh, he just stretched for that back bar. Now he's got a push. Oh, a rub, but it's still there. Two oxes to go, 39 point 
2.9, the time speed. Max was pushing all the way down there. He saw his stride from miles out. Is he going to do it again? Took an extra one. Oh. This is going to be very close indeed. He's into second place. That was very, very close. Three tenths of a second approximately. Just behind that Julien Piard time. Into second goes Max Kuna, EIC, up to Jacko Blue. I was a bit slower than Julia Epaya. Usually I saw that I end up between the top three or maybe top five. And in the end it was sevens. I think this atmosphere gives the riders wings and it gives the British riders extra wings and an extra turbo. At least it must have been like that today. This is a very fast horse, a fast combination. They were victorious 12 months ago. It's Scott Brash for Great Britain with Hello Jefferson. 37.99, that's the time set by Daniel Coyle and Legacy. The penultimate rider to go was Scott Brash, last year's winner, and he was hoping to join an elite club that includes John Whitaker and Nick Skelton. He knew what he had to do. And I have to say, watching that round, it was just a masterclass of how to get the best out of your horse. It didn't necessarily look electrifyingly quick, but the way the horse ate up the ground in the final stages of that round, and then the crowd just erupt into full excitement and just wondering what might be with the final rider to go in Ben Mayer. Go on, Scott. He's got a shift now. He's galloping down to the last, it's 37.99. Will he do it? He's done it. He goes into the lead. This is absolutely breathtaking. Ben Mayer has had a really interesting year. Of course, he's been dominating the FEI Western European League qualifiers and, and looking so strong. So here he is coming on his relatively new horse at nine years of age and he wasn't entirely sure how the horse was going to perform, having been a little bit disappointing in the early part of the week and he wondered, has the horse done too much already? We've just seen a very experienced 14-year-old Ello Jefferson take the lead here in London at the London FEI Jumping World Cup qualifier. Just the last man in, the world number two, the Olympic champion Ben Mayer, with just a nine-year-old, this Toulon gelding, Anjou de Grissienne. Of course, as a rider and when we have a very talented horse, especially when they are young, we, we always think about how much can we ask for in the jump off, uh, how much is appropriate to the horse. But when the audience is so much with you and uh, you have such a great atmosphere, you maybe don't think so much, you just feel for it and you go for it. And the horses also feel that, or especially these horses which are so good in the ring, I think they, they also get extra wings with this atmosphere. When you see Ben Mayer come into the ring, you know he's going to leave absolutely nothing out there. And again, the way he rode so positively, taking out a stride at one of the final parts of the jump off, gave him that little bit of an edge. And then when he's turning round to that final fence, he was able to let the handbrake off. And this horse is just so willing. And you think, just nine years of age. This is going to be very close indeed. It looks him. like, are we going to have a new leader? He's taken it. 37.18. This is unbelievable in London. He knew he had it. That was so special. Coming home over half a second ahead of Scott Rash was just an extraordinary achievement and a thrilling conclusion to what I think was one of the best jump-offs I have ever seen.